One of the president's harshest critics is praising his speech. CNN political commentator Van Jones is applauding what he calls the moment Trump became presidential. Trump dedicated part of his speech to honoring fallen Navy SEAL Ryan Owens. He was killed during a recent military raid in Yemen, and his wife Karen, seated next to first daughter Ivanka Trump, overcome with emotion. Ryan was a part of a highly successful raid that generated large amounts of vital intelligence that will lead to many more victories in the future against our enemy. Ryan's legacy is etched into eternity. Thank you. And Ryan is looking down right now. You know that. And he's very happy because I think he just broke a record. <laughs> Ryan laid down his life for his friends, for his country, and for our freedom. And we will never forget Ryan. And Van Jones uh, joining me now, also with me, CNN political commentator Angela Rye. So, Van, you said this, that this, quote, that was one of the most extraordinary moments you've ever seen in American politics. Why? Mm -hmm. Well, because of the ability for the emotionality to connect with uh, the political agenda of, Don of Donald Trump, usually the emotions that he's playing on are very, very dark, very fear-based. What I think that liberals have to take away from it is that the virus is mutating. Uh, he is developing new weaponry uh, that I don't think that liberals expected him to be able to develop so quickly. His, most of his speeches are terrible. Uh, you have Twitter Trump, which is terrible, and then you have teleprompter Trump, which is barely any better. Um, this was an effective speech. Um, he was able to do things you haven't seen him do before. Um, his agenda is still just as awful. Uh, the speech was full of lies and, and the same kind of stuff he always does. But he now has a set of weapons you've not seen him use before. If he starts doing this kind of thing instead of those crazy rallies over and over again, you begin to create problems for Democrats that I don't think they're ready for. Do you agree, Angela, with Van, that this was presidential? Um, I definitely don't think that this is presidential, and, I, and it could be that I just don't understand the standard that we're using. But if by presidential we're talking about becoming a, a leader on the world stage, one that uh, Americans everywhere could be hopeful about and supportive of, then I think the answer is a resounding no. Donald Trump took took them took 61 minutes to tell 51 lies and they aren't just lies about his but records what, but of Angela, promised what about jobs that and hope. specific what about that specific moment that we're talking about sure I think that that just demonstrates his ability to be a decent human being but I don't think that his, overall his speech this joint address to Congress demonstrates his ability nor was it presidential so in, when, again I think that we have to go back to the fact that he talked about creating jobs that he did not create he talks about this wonderful record he has so far while he's been in office that pales in comparison to my president Barack Obama so I think again when we talk about the standard of being presidential he's not met that standard and I'm not willing to give him a pass because the bar is low. Van? Well, listen, um, I appreciate the, the passion. Part of the thing is that uh, President Obama set a standard, as far as I'm concerned, that's not likely to be met uh, soon. Um, that's fair. I don't think that, so I don't, so I don't think President Obama is a standard. The pre we've had some great presidents and we've had some awful presidents and then we've had President Trump. And the problem that you have with President Trump is President Trump has not even touched until now hasn't even touched the shoe of the the worst of them and suddenly though I think Democrats have expected that he's gonna stay that bad so much of what the liberals have made an issue of isn't just his agenda but it's his temperament and his tone and his team 
He now seems to have developed a team that since that awful inaugural address, that, you know, carnage address, has now been able to come up with a different playbook for public addresses. Everybody got mad at me for, for saying this, but I'm going to tell you, watch the bounce he gets out of that speech and watch how, how he starts to use a different playbook. Liberals are going to have to, they're, they're, we're going to have to reset. He is not always going to just hand us uh, uh, opportunities to go after him. If he starts to improve his performance like that, liberals are going to have to reset how we deal with this guy. So, is Van, it, and it, I, I hear, go ahead, Brianna. Go on, Angela. Is, I, I guess, is it, is it undeniable, as Van is saying, that this was just a, a better Trump and that is a challenge to Democrats? No, I think it was a different Trump, and he's demonstrated his ability to read off of a teleprompter before. I think that Van is right that we shouldn't expect that he's going to be as predictable as maybe we once thought he was. Shame on us if any of us thought he was anything but predictable. But I think the reality of it is the same day that he delivered this address is the same day he signed a, an executive order that makes our waterways far more treacherous, and Flint is still an issue. The same day that he delivers this address, Jeff Sessions is talking about dialing back on lawsuits against police departments that have harmed black and brown bodies. This is within a week of them saying they are going to federally come after uh, folks who utilize recre recreational marijuana in states where it's legal. This is the same Donald Trump, and regardless of if he's screaming or he's trolling media on Twitter, this is the same one. So we have to recognize the tone, but recognize it's not the message, it's the policy. And that is what we have to continue to fight against. And we have to be okay. woke. We can't be distracted by, by the tone at all. Okay, let, let me say a couple things here. Um, it's liberals that have made an issue of two things, both his policies, which are terrible, and his tone, which is often terrible. What you see now is he's showing he can address the tone question. So it's okay. liberals who, so, so now all I'm saying is, listen, you now have potentially a prettier rapper on the same poison. And so you can't say, as liberals have been saying, his, to his, t his tone is terrible, his temperament is terrible, and then when it changes, say, well, that doesn't matter. All I'm trying to point out to, to liberals is, if we thought we were going to get a twofer, terrible policy and terrible, terrible deliver delivery, we may be in a different environment. So what does that mean? First of all, it means I think liberals have not internalized some realities here. He is collapsing with liberals. It's true. Liberals have, you know, from 20 percent down to 12 percent. But he is actually holding strong with Republicans, 90 plus percent, and independents are moving his way even before this speech. So the liberal momentum that we have that we're so proud of with the rallies, with the town halls, with the airports, is not yet translating to a breakup of his support even with independents. And that was before this speech. And so all I'm saying is, listen, when I say he's presidential, that's frankly a, a bare Standard. I'm not saying he's George Washington or, 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 or Barack Obama, but I'm saying he did crack now that bare standard, and we are going to have to take him more seriously. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and I don't, I'm not doubting, um, you know, the fact that we need to take him more seriously. I think that we also need to be aware that he's just as dangerous regardless of how he speaks, regardless he's more of how dangerous. calm he sounds. Agreed, Van. So I agree with you on that point, and I wonder what is our obligation then to tell the truth about what he's saying? The fact that it is just, it's exactly the same, it does not matter what the tone is. I've not been a tone person. I've been all about what he says and the impact that, of what he says. So him and this Muslim ban that he says is not a Muslim ban, that he tells the courts, I'm going to see you in court, they're going to maybe take out Iraq, and it's still just as treacherous. So we just have to still acknowledge the dangerous nature of the words that he speaks and the policies that they hope to put for, push forth. Listen, you and I are in complete agreement, and I think that part of the thing is we, we are pretending that the standard of, I'm, when I say this guy has not met the standard of a president, we have had mm -hmm. some awful presidents and he couldn't even catch them. He has now caught them. He can at least do the things that presidents are supposed to do. He can stand up and give a speech that's effective. He can pull on some of Reagan's tricks to use American stories to advance his agenda. The, he hasn't done any of that stuff before. All I'm saying is if you are playing a team, and you are used to just saying all he can do is drive to the basket. All we got to do is stop him from driving to the basket. We can stop him. And then they start raining some threes down on you. You've got, okay, hold on a second. That's some new stuff. He showed some new stuff yesterday. And so what my, my big hope is going forward is that we have to get very surgical as liberals. First of all, I think that so much of our, you're different, but so many people come on and what they talk about is uh, proper protocol and politeness, that this guy does mm -hmm. not follow proper protocols and he's not polite. 
they don't get to the substantive uh, issues, and then guess what? He might change on that. Now you're going to have to deal, with, and you've been there, but others have not, with the actual substantive impact. What we're not talking about is the fact that, frankly, the prices of groceries are about to go through the roof if you chase off all the immigrant labor. There's a lot of practical issues that we don't talk about because we're so busy policing his tone, and last night he didn't even let us do that. And Van, I guess the thing that I would, I would say back to you as my brother and my friend is that you are brilliant and you have the ability to translate the dangerous nature of the impacts of his policy agenda. And I would just continue to urge you to do that. Like it is so important for us to have these conversations, to talk to folks who are Trump supporters who we were tuning out, and I'm owning that, tuning out and blocking out and thinking it was just ignorance. And he won, to your point, from during the election. So what do we do to have these conversations to say, listen, Trump supporter A or B, this is just as dangerous for you. This is going to impact you just as much as it does someone in the inner city, just as much as it does in rural Appalachia. This is a problem for all of us. This isn't about a partisan divide. This is just the difference between wrong and right. He sounded like a decent human being yesterday, but those policies are still not decent human policies. I think we have to emphasize that. Angela, Look, I, I, why, were, why were liberals so upset by what Van said, by, by acknowledging that this was uh, more presidential? Because I don't think, Brianna, that a lot of people thought it was more presidential. I think the tone is one piece of this, and Van talked about that. There are a lot of folks who just said, he's mean old Donald Trump. But there are many more of us who are saying, no, you have to look at their record. Look at what he did just yesterday. This is dangerous. This is troubling. This is causing, this is literally <clears throat> causing people to live in fear. We have to acknowledge that. It's not about him sounding presidential. It's about him being presidential and pushing for policy that that protects people on our soil our soil and beyond that is a reality let me, let me just yeah. make, make a let me it's a, it's a it's a it might be a minor point it might be a major point mm -hmm. being presidential you could be presidential and have terrible policies Nixon um, behaved before he got in trouble the first term yeah you know, he f fulfilled the basic functions of being a president he just had terrible policies I disagree with Reagan's policies Mm -hmm. Donald Trump has terrible policies, and he has behaved in a way that is completely unpresidential, including most of his speeches, including his inaugural address, which was basically just an amped-up rally speech. So sure. when I say that he is now behaving in a more presidential way, I'm not making a judgment about his policies. His policies are awful. But I just think at some point, when somebody gets beat up on, rightfully so, behaving in a bizarre, childish crazy, petulant way, and then they change their behavior, you've got to acknowledge that. You can't just say, well, it doesn't matter how, how he gives a speech. We have said, you haven't, but we have said consistently, the substance of the speech is terrible and the way he's doing it is terrible. He has now made an adjustment. I, I don't understand why pointing out that he took a card away from his critics last night is doing disservice to the liberal cause. Yeah, and I don't know that I've, that I've said that it was doing a disservice to a liberal yeah. cause. I think that my point is we've seen him make a pivot before, and that thing didn't even last 24 hours. So I think from that standpoint, too, I was surprised that you said it. Like, let's give this dude, let's see what he says on Twitter today, right? Like, <laughs> is this really going to happen? We don't really even know. He can't, yeah. he can't be disciplined enough to, to withstand the pivot. Is it, Van, just a, a final thought to you, is it denial on the part of Democrats to not acknowledge that that's really an issue for him changing the tone because the polls that we saw of even moderate Republicans who were thinking they might not be able to get behind Donald Trump was to this very issue that they didn't feel it was about tone. It wasn't necessarily about his policies. Yeah, I think that the, the virus has mutated. I think that he just got a taste of something Probably people have been telling him, if you would tone this down a little bit, you might get a little bit of, of, of traction here. And he probably, like Angela said, couldn't do it, didn't want to do it, blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but my bet is he starts doing what you just saw over and over. I see, see him going into media markets. I see him doing stuff and actually hoping that liberals continue to miss the, the fact that he's growing in office. He, he, I hate to say this, it doesn't make me happy to say this, 
I, I would wish I could say I didn't see what I saw, but I saw a person with the worst ideas in the world getting better at delivering the message, and that is very worrisome. All right, Van Jones, Angela Rye, thank you so much to both of you.